With gratitude to our donors, past and present, the Catholic Foundation is pleased to serve as a broadcast sponsor of the upcoming televised Mass. A trusted giving vehicle for 65 years, the Catholic Foundation serves its donors, the Catholic community, and more. Because it's a community foundation, the Foundation knows about ongoing and emerging needs, including Catholic and non-Catholic interests locally and nationally. It's a simple concept. Donors create a fund at the Foundation. From those funds, schools are built, churches are supported, and compassion is given to the needy. Scholarships provide top quality education, and religious programs are supported. Join our donors and partner with us to assure your charitable support is most effective. Contact us when you sense it's time to give back. You're invited to be a part of our family of donors dedicated to compassionate, charitable giving, both for the present and for the future. It's what our faith is about. Together, we are the foundation. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I want to welcome everyone to this Sunday Mass at St. Juan Diego Catholic Church here in Dallas, Texas. My name is Father James Amarucci. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Dallas, currently assigned as the Associate Director of Formation at Holy Trinity Seminary in Irving. And I want to thank everyone for your continued prayers for all our seminarians as we pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes. But what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge. Give it to grazing. Break through its walls. Let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the house of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plants. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed for justice. But hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
Won't you look down from heaven and see? Take care of this vine, protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the chief priest 
and the elders of the people. Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. It is wonderful to be with you today as we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And it's also wonderful to be in this beautiful parish of St. Juan Diego. Being in the seminary is a beautiful blessing. We have 52 seminarians representing 11 dioceses. But it's always good to be back in the parish because that's the whole reason why we have a diocesan seminary to train men to be able to serve our families and the faithful in parishes in the Diocese of Dallas and other dioceses around the country. It reminds me of the fact that this coming Wednesday, October 7th, which is the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary, is my 10th anniversary as a deacon, the anniversary of my ordination to the diaconate. And one of the things I clearly remember is the advice that I was given by my German grandmother. She's very practical, and she came up to me and she said, James, I'm going to give you some pastoral wisdom. She said, the shorter the homily, the more money you get in the basket. So I've never forgotten that pastoral wisdom from my German grandmother. And I remember as a newly ordained priest being able to celebrate Mass at the St. Anthony's in Wiley, the daily Mass, and my brother and my sister, I'm the oldest of six children. At the time, my youngest sister was about 10 years old. Uh, and um, we were at daily mass, the rest of the family couldn't come, so my brother was serving, and my sister had to be by herself out in the pews, and we had mass, and at the end of mass, my brother, being my younger brother, timed my homily, and he said, James, you won't believe this, your homily was only 90 seconds long. Now, don't get too excited, that's daily mass, not Sunday mass, 90 seconds long, but I said, no, I think it was much longer than that. Of course, being brothers, we went back and forth till we got in the car, and we were driving away, and I asked my youngest sister, Stephanie, who was in the back seat, I said, Stephanie, John Peter says that the homily was only 90 seconds long, but I think it was a lot longer than that. What do you think? And she said, James, to be honest with you, I wasn't paying attention to the homily. I always have a sense of humor in life. And we see that in the parables 
that Jesus recounts in the gospel to his listeners in those days and to us through the liturgy. He always shows a divine sense of humor. But before we dive into what that means, we have to have a proper definition of humor. You see, humor is not the one-line joke, the comic relief. A beautiful definition of humor is as follows. Humor is the ability to see through things. It's the ability to see through things. And unfortunately, in the parable today, the tenants completely lost their identity and their purpose because they failed to have a sense of humor. Rather than recognizing that they are the tenants working for the landowner, they thought themselves able to be the heir to acquire the inheritance. Rather than focus on producing the fruit, the beautiful fruit that a vineyard can produce, instead, they produce works of darkness. They seize the servants, one they beat, another they kill, the third they stoned. They treated other servants in the same way. And at the end of the day, they seized the son of the landlord, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. They lost their identity and purpose because they failed to be able to see through things. And the invitation in today's liturgy is to be reminded of the fact that we are called to have a divine sense of humor as we more and more see things as God sees things. Because sometimes our vision can be so narrow because we're finite creatures limited by space and time. But the amazing thing about God is he's eternal. He sees the eternal picture. And to be able to enter into his plan, his designs, his purpose for us, and our identity as the beloved children of God sets us free. Sets us free because we're able to see through things. Whenever I teach engaged couples or do a baptism class, one of the things I always remind everyone, if you think about the definition of sin, it's pretty simple. If you spell out sin, what's the middle letter? I. What sin ultimately is, is an unhealthy focus on self. Because we're made for relationship. Why? Because we're made in the image and likeness of God who through the person of Jesus Christ has revealed that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so what we're called to do is more and more be able, in our relationship with God and our relationship with others, be able to see, to think, to speak, to act like Christ. But as we know in life, that can be so difficult, which is why, beautifully, in today's second reading, St. Paul gives the Philippians and us a remedy to this. He says, have no anxiety at all. And how is that possible? In everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. St. Paul invites us in order to be men and women who have a sense of humor, the divine sense of humor, which the world so desperately needs each day, particularly in our day and age, we need to be men and women of thanksgiving. It is quite beautiful that every Sunday, the church celebrates the Eucharist, the Greek term meaning thanksgiving. Because what thanksgiving does is it always takes the attention off self and always on another. And when we are men and women in thanksgiving, in the small and big things, we become witness to Christ himself. When I was a seminarian, I had the opportunity to travel with one of my sisters to Poland. And we stayed mainly in Krakow, but on one of our day trips, we went to Wadowice, which is the hometown of St. John Paul II, whose memorial the church celebrates later this month. And it was a nice bus ride down 
There's the town square, there's a church, there's a little museum where uh, Karl Wojtyla, later John Paul II, and his father lived. Their old house has been converted to a museum. And we decided at one point it was time to eat. So where do you think we go for lunch? We found this Italian place of all places <laughs> and had a pizza. And so we were sitting down eating a pizza in the middle of Poland, just enjoying our time together. And we were hungry. So when the pizza came, we were thinking right away, got to eat the pizza. And all of a sudden, I remember telling my sister, wait a second, wait a second. We need to say grace. And so we paused, made the sign of the cross, and said the blessing. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we have received from thy bounty through Christ our Lord, the traditional blessing that Catholics so often use at mealtime. And then we started eating the pizza. Well, during the meal, my sister gets up and goes to the restroom. And I notice out of the corner of my eye, there's these two gentlemen that get up from their seats and they're heading out of the restaurant. And they pass by my table and they stop and they look at me. I'm wondering, what is this all about? And they say to me, they say, we're two priests. They weren't wearing any collar, Roman collar at that point. They said, we're two priests, and we just want to tell you how edifying it was for us to see two young people saying grace before a meal. And well, I got super excited, and I said, well, actually, I'm a seminarian studying to be a priest. And then about that time, my sister comes back from the restroom, and I realize I have something to explain. What am I doing as a seminarian traveling by myself with this beautiful, young, attractive woman? It's like, she is my sister, I promise you. But I always remember how two priests were edified by the simplest of gestures. They didn't hear what we were saying, but we made the sign of the cross and they knew we were giving thanks to God. What a beautiful consideration we have this upcoming week to say, how can I be a witness of thanksgiving? of recognizing the fact that everything that is good and beautiful comes from the Lord. And even in the moments of trial and crosses, the Lord is here. The Lord is with me. And I don't have to have any anxiety at all. Because when I am thankful and when I pray, I can make my request known to God. Then St. Paul promises then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, we will be able to see and to think and to feel more and more as God sees and thinks and feels. So as we approach this holy altar and celebrate this Holy Mass, where we see something that the world does not see, that through the prayers of the church, through the words of consecration, bread and wine is transformed into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, who said on the night before he died, this is my body, this is my blood. May we be men and women attentive to the fact that we have the ability to see through things by God's grace each and every day, every moment of our lives, so that we may grow in the divine sense of humor. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now ask God to look down upon the vineyard he has planted and bring comfort to all who are in need. The church leaders, by preaching the just word, will till the soil of faithfulness to the mandates of the gospel of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead us in public service will work to alleviate poverty and injustice of every kind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who labor in the fields will receive just compensation as they work to harvest the world's food. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people in abusive relationships, may they experience God's love and know that their abuse is not God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the sick will be freed from anxiety by the comforting touch of those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will inherit the kingdom promised to all who put their faith and trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wisdom and love, in you we find peace that surpasses all understanding. Hear our prayers that the work of our hands might build up the kingdom of God and help to spread your peace throughout the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. fresco Señor como víctima de holocausto a tu amor misericordioso yo recibo Señor de tu infinito amor la posesión eterna de ti mismo consúmeme sin cesar Haz mi alma desbordar de tu ternura infinita. Cada latido, Señor, desde mi corazón sea un renovar de esta ofrenda. Cada latido, Señor, desde mi corazón. Hasta 
cada latido Señor Desde mi corazón sea un renovar de esta ofrenda Cada latido Señor Desde mi corazón sea un renovar de esta ofrenda Hasta la Hasta la eternidad. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is 
my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Juan Diego, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and his assistant Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. song in itself it's not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart and I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, oh, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. 
years Now I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you, oh It's all about you, Jesus This is all for you, Lord Precious Jesus now pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Burns and all of the people in the Diocese of Dallas, I wish to offer our gratitude to the Catholic Foundation for making every broadcast of these video masses possible. Catholics from throughout North Texas and beyond have expressed their gratitude to the diocese. And again, we send ours along with theirs to the Catholic Foundation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and